Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to use Analogs Effects Pro 2 from the Nick Collection by Google, which is now free in Photoshop and Lightroom. Theme tune! Do -do 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 -do. Do -do -do I'm canoeing. Yeah, I'm canoeing fast! Today, because we're doing Analog Effects Pro, I actually have a few cameras here. This is um, my, uh, my FM2. I have a video on that, it's amazing. I have my Petri camera and an old school Polaroid. I love my, those three cameras and I still shoot with them all now. Anyway, so what we're gonna do today is to look at how we use this plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom from the Nick Collection, and it is now free. Um, and it's how to essentially take an image and how to give it like that analog feel, make it look like it was photographed on film, on one of these here. It's kind of an amazing thing and actually one of the best things from the Nick Collection that I personally feel like it's got a purpose for. So let's jump into Lightroom and Photoshop and have a look. So we're gonna be using this photograph today which is using my Petri camera I shot in Mexico a few years ago. You can actually see this is me in the middle here actually taking the photograph. If you want to practice along with me, you can go to stockpick.com and download this image. I'll put the link in the description below. So anyway, if you want to edit this, all you have to do is in Photoshop, if you look at my other videos, you can see you literally just collect, you just select um, from the automate, you bring up the, the little image and then you can select Analog Effects Pro 2. Today we're going to be doing this inside Lightroom. So you select it to do it inside Lightroom, edit a copy with a Lightroom adjustment. So you want to get it to a really good place before you do this. And that's what you would want to do. I would always suggest edit as copy. Leave it as a TIFF file, 16 bit, um, so that you got nice bit depth. Yep, that all looks good to me. Maybe you want to make this 300. Um, DPI for the resolution, but whatever, um, it doesn't really matter. It's actually, is it DPI? I don't know. Anyway, you open up this and this is the Analog Effects Pro 2. So let's have a quick look around this and we'll, let's see what it does. So it always opens up with this effect here, okay? So at the top left-hand corner, you have something called cameras. And this has a load of presets which are sitting there for you inside your cameras. So let's select classic camera number seven and it creates this wonderful effect. Now, we'll have a quick look at the other things and then I'll go over because this is actually, there's a lot going on in this and it's more than just these few things here. So these are your different looks into your before and afters before on the left, after on the right hand side, or you can split it top and bottom. There's also a compare one, which is above and below, or again, you can have it side by side, which is awesome. And when you're in the full one here, you can use the compare button, which literally turns it on and off, so you can quickly have a look. Top right hand side, you have your zoom. So if you set to 400, then you double click on the image. Oh, sorry, then you click on the zoom, it's gonna zoom in 400%. I like to have it at 100%, so this is how I can see it. And then if I just click on this again, it brings me all the way out. On the right hand side is all of your different panels, which allows you to make any adjustments. So, this is where it gets really important, is you start at the top here under classic camera. If you click on this, this is what what I think is amazing, it gives you loads of different types of cameras. So for example, we're in classic camera, but then you could go for a black and white. So this is like it was shot on film in black and white, and it brings up a bunch of presets for you that are already built in, that you can click on, and then it will load all the things up and it will put it inside black and white for you. But on the right hand side, it gives you lots of options that you can then customize this. So you might want to change the film type. Okay, or you might want to go into dirt and scratches and change it to have more dirt and scratches, like so. Really, oh, uh, which is really easy to do, okay? Um, but then you could also go back up here and then you could select, oh, let's have a look at, um, I don't know, a vintage camera, okay? So then it brings up all of these and then it brings up a new set of presets on the left-hand side that you can click and it's gonna load. Now this is amazing. And again, there's all the options here. Now I'm not gonna go through these options here at this point with the presets for this reason. is because you could click on any of these, multi-lens and everything like this. 
which is all wonderful. But the most important thing is tools. Now, all of these tools down here is what appear on the right-hand side in any of the presets. However, you get different tools for different cameras because they don't all use all the tools. So for example, I've gone for a multi lens now. So I can click on this and this is one of those cameras where you just have three or four different lenses. And then it basically, um, you can select how many different lenses it would have and then where it would aim the different things and it will load up what that will look like. And again, so there we go. It looks awesome. But what we're gonna do today and this is fun to play around with, so just click through those and have a great time. We're actually gonna work through every single item here, and then you can essentially build your own camera. So let's start off with basic adjustments, and so you click on one of them, then they all open up down here. And then this is what you get the little options on the other side. Really powerful, so basic adjustments allows you to boost your details and everything like this, so you can see it's a little bit like kind of like contrast, but where it's slightly different because it, it's taking it from film. So uh, yeah, it kind of uses texture more than just contrast. And then you do have your brightness, has your contrast and your sa saturation, okay? Now what's really great about this one here is just like the other ones, you have control points. So remember, if you want to learn what control points are, please look at my other videos because I don't have time to do it today. But essentially you click on an area Okay, so we're in, we're in the blue, so then it's gonna look at all of the blues that are inside this circle. And then what I can do is I can increase, increase the saturation of those blues. You can see it's done all the blues in the image just by selecting that. If I move the control point to the skin tones, you can see the blues will go back to normal and now the skin tones have been boosted. Really amazing with the control points, okay? Let's just turn those off though for now. The next thing that we have here is lens distortion. So this is amazing because it looks at different lenses, especially in retro cameras, would really affect how an image looked. So for example, you might get a pin cushion. So that basically um, is, it extends the outside of the image and it squeezes the middle of the image and it gives this effect just here. The opposite is barrel, which is actually kind of like a fisheye effect. So you can do that just there. Let's leave it in the middle somewhere. And then you have the chromatic shift. So I don't know if anybody's ever had this, but sometimes when you have a strong line of contrast, you'll end up with green or blue areas inside the image. So you can actually boost this all the way up and you can see it's added this green hairline to it. And then on the opposite side, it's gonna add a red hairline to it. So the red comes from the shadows and a green comes from the highlights. So it's really simple on that. And what you can do is you can actually change if you want it to be green and pink, yellow and blue, okay, or the red and um, kind of uh, blue, turquoise, whatever. So that's what you can add inside here, really give that old school feel. And then your defocus essentially puts a little bit of a blur on your image as well, which is kind of amazing. Now at the bottom, you have vary, which will essentially move your sliders around and just give you a variant. So if you're looking for something exciting, you can just click vary and see how it changes and how it looks. All of these as well, you can hit save and save it as a preset. We're not gonna do that today. So that's that, the next section, bokeh. Okay, now bokeh is really amazing. Essentially it's the blur as it fades out. So the things that are out of focus, what does the bokeh look like? So actually before we do this, I'm gonna hit cancel and I'm gonna add a white dot to this image so we can really show this. So I'm just gonna take the brush tool and then I'm gonna shrink it down. I'm gonna make a, a white dot just here and we're going to literally boost everything up so it's pure white dot, okay, great. And now what we'll do is I'm gonna go back in and now I'm going to do exactly the same thing, go to analog Okay, it's gonna load up this image exactly the same way, but now we're gonna have a white dot on it. And I'm gonna show you why right now. Great, so say that we're in here, I'm just gonna use this camera three as my base, and then we'll go again into the settings, and we're gonna look at bokeh. Now the important thing with bokeh is this. So you can boost the blur of your bokeh, so the out of focus sections, okay? And you're actually adding this in by moving this control point and you can add in, so anything inside here is always in focus. This is the fade out, okay? 
and you can actually extend that too. So you can just grab it and pull it. Okay, but we wanna keep this dot here because I want to show you. I can change the shape of this. So look at the shape here, it's like a triangle. But what we can do is if we go through, it's actually gonna change the shape. So we'll go to the star one and now look, it's like a star. And so if you've got any street lights or anything, you can even change it to the shape of a heart. Can you see that this is now a heart? It's kind of amazing that as you do this, you see it creates this beautiful heart shape or it's a circle and then you've got these star shapes too. So that's how you can create these different effects in the background just by using bokeh, which is amazing. Hold on. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so let's have a look at, where are we? So we're just here. So after bokeh, we now have zoom and rotate. So this is, again, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. You can protect the center area, so how much you don't want to be moved out of focus, we'll keep it on the center of the camera. And then you can say, I want it to really zoom out a lot. And also, this is what's really amazing about this, is you can add, watch, a rotation. Can you see how those lines are now rotating? And it's gonna add this spin effect to the actual blur, which, is an amazing effect. Look at this, the before and the after. It kind of looks really cool. And you can also do this on the sliders just here. And you can go in each direction, like so, which looks amazing. So again, we'll turn that off. That's the zoom and rotate blur. Then you've got motion blur. So as if it was a slow shutter speed, and then you've got a bit of motion going on. So to do this, again, you select the section you don't want to blur at all. So we'll have it as the camera. And then this toggle here is what allows you to go blur in this direction a lot. Or you can say blur in this direction, okay? And that's all I'm doing. I'm just moving this around, which is kind of amazing to add these things. But what I can also do is add another blur point, okay? So to add a blur point, I just add in another one. And then I can say, well, this one zoom in this direction. And it's now gonna zoom in that direction and in that direction, which is kind of amazing. You can add multiples of these and then you can click on them and change how they are affecting each part of the image, which is very powerful. So we'll turn that off. Let's look at the next one, double exposure. This is one of my favorites. So when you load it, it gives you a double exposure of the image which you already have. So you can see if I move this, I'm actually adding a secondary, you can see the border of this exposure and I can extend it like so, looks fantastic. And I can change the balance so I can have more of the second exposure or less of it, like so. And then I can change the exposure. So if it was a double exposure, taking two photos on the same film. So if you're on 35 mil film, expose it once, you expose it twice. Sometimes you ended up with it overexposed, which is kind of amazing. Now this next feature is amazing. And that's you have a plus button. And now you can add in a completely different image. So let's have, this is a beautiful sun, let's have, this is a picture of me in the snow. So we add this and what this actually does is it makes that the second exposure. Okay, like so. And we're gonna change the balance down. So it's gonna be mainly in the sun, but then you're just gonna have me, like kind of cold in the bottom. And now I think that looks amazing. Double exposure in just a few clicks, which is phenomenal. But again, just turn that off. And really I do say play around with this because it's amazing. Light leaks. So this is when basically you'd have a hole in your camera or something where it wasn't sealed correctly and light would come on. Very cool. And literally you can click through these different light leaks and you're gonna have completely different effects for each one. We're on soft automatically, but then there's crisp ones which really add like strong borders to things. So let's add on um, uh, this one just here. So you can see it's very strong. And if we boost it up here as well, the lines that we're gonna get are kind of amazing. Now what you can do as well, is you can move the leak around. So you can say, well, I'm gonna move it across, so I'm gonna get more of this red, which is just here. So all of these things are very customizable, okay? And again, you then have dynamic, which are kind of, they have motion to them um, and look amazing to get some light leaks over the top of your image to really change how it looks. So again, hugely powerful. I'll turn it off and let's have a look at the next one.
dirt and scratches. So this is literally like you've taken a photograph and then it's got dirt on it over the years. Loads of different effects and you just click through them and it's gonna just put this on as an overlay. Now what you're able to do with this one is you can add a control point onto this and you can actually change the texture strength to areas. So I could say, for example, over the top of the camera, over this area, I don't wanna have any texture. So that will essentially remove it from that area, which means I've not got some huge blobs on someone's face, which is great. Then you have different things here. You've got scratches, so these look completely different again. There you go, and it's covered the image in these scratches, but let's take it away from this area. And you can see it's actually removing it from there, or I can remove it from the skin tones, for example, which is kind of an amazing little feature. Let me just extend that to have. And then you've got organic, which is all, just go through and play with these. There's some very good ones. I would say don't push it too far. Pull back the strength on this so that you only have a little bit of it. Okay, the next one, photo plate. So this was when you used to take photographs on a large format camera and it would be taken on kind of a glass plate, I think. So you can add it and give it this wet look of a plate, which again is amazing. There's different versions inside the drop down, and you can change the strength. Amazing. Lens vignette. So this, I already have tutorials on this, but you can do it in Photoshop and Lightroom. Um, I wouldn't do this in here because you may as well just add it later on in Lightroom because you can remove it easily. Film type, this is one of my favorites. So essentially, this is the type of film, what color your shadows are, okay, what color your highlights. Your highlights are yellows, and your shadows are yellows, so you, uh, 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 like greenish color. So you've got warm, which is yellow, yellows, and you've got some greens too. You've also got cool, which had some purples and some blue and greens. Then you've got subtle ones, which kind of have all sorts of different effects to them. And then you've got black and white as well. Um, so you can have a black and white um, film to this. And then again, you've got all these sliders so that you can change the uh, neutral point or the, if you want it to be more faded. So in other words, where, where do you want your black point to be? So if you want it to be faded, you go all the way up and then your blacks will never be black. They'll kind of be a gray instead, which again is amazing. Okay, the final three points to get through here, guys. The multi-lens, which is very self-explanatory, you click through, you've got, you, it's when those cameras would have different, four different lenses facing different directions and give these kind of amazing feelings. So you can have a different variation type, so that moves through your different tonal contrasts on each one of the sections, which is kind of amazing. And again, you can hit vary and it will just move things around automatically for you, which is kind of fun. Final one, really that I think is useful is frames and that puts a frame around it. So this is like a, an old 35 mil frame. This would be from like a, a, a wet plate, would look something like this. You've got all sorts of different borders on here that you can click through. It's, so these are all film ones. You've then got the ones against the white. Um, so we'll load one of those up. And then you've got a light box one as well. So that is if you've got your image over the top of a light box because you're looking at a uh, when it was on slide or something. And it would look something like this. Looks absolutely amazing. So once you've gone through and made all of your edits, what you could then do is you then come down here and you go to custom plus and it would save all of these settings down the side. Now once you've done, so I'm gonna load up one of my favorites, which comes from Vintage Camera. It's Vintage Camera 5 is the one that I really like because I just think it looks really, really cool. But what I'm gonna do though with this one is I'm gonna pull back my brightness just a little bit, like so. And what I'm also going to do is under Light Leaks, I'm gonna change my Light Leak because I like it to be this one because it adds that extra little bit, which looks great. And then I'm gonna change my lens vignette. I'm gonna actually take my lens vignette off completely. And that to me is looking great. And what I'm gonna add in, so on the side here, you can add things by going, I would like to add in a little bit of a motion blur to this. Just a little bit. I mean, it comes in with a lot. I'm gonna go like so. I'm gonna make sure that the middle of the camera is looking great. I think that's looking really kind of cool now. Um, and then why not just stick a frame on it? Because we can. <laughs> um, be careful of that though, because you end up 
doing all sorts of things just because. So let's add that. That now looks like a real old school vintage camera and then you just hit save. And then it's gonna save the image to Lightroom. Now, if you want to go in and make any changes in Lightroom, you'd have to reload that image and start again from scratch, which is why presets are kind of awesome. But also, remember, if you do it in Photoshop, open it as a smart object, and then when you edit it, you can then go back in and re-edit inside um, Analog Effects Pro 2, and you can change anything and then resave it, and it doesn't actually, it's a non-destructive editing technique. So you can always do that. Anyway, that was my video on how to use Analog Effects Pro 2, I wish they had better names, for the Nick Collection by Google. Um, my name's Ed Gregory, Photos in Color, and please give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe because it really helps my channel and also it helps you because you're gonna get loads of tips on how to do editing in different software. I'm done. I'm tired. Theme tune. Do-do-do-do-do-do.